guys, welcome back to Charmoose. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we've got something really special. The first Porsche, um, first Porsche vehicle on the Sharp Moves channel. Um, obviously, if you follow my my stuff, you know you know we're we're big sort of AMG M car sort of fans on this channel. Uh, but we do love Porsche as well, and so we're really happy today to get uh, our first 911 and a special 911 to the channel. So without further ado, this is Andrew Potter. Andrew, how you doing? Very good. Steve, thanks for having me. No problem. This is uh, his 911. He's going to tell us a little bit about it. It's a 1997 Porsche 911 Targa. Uh, it's one of the last of the air-cooled Porsches. Uh, I acquired it back in 2009 and I've fixed it up a little bit and maintained it ever since and I kind of drive it as a Sunday car, maybe a Saturday night day car. Why don't we get in the car and maybe take it for a little drive, uh, see, how, see how it runs. Let's do it. Let's see if we can get out of the backyard here. This car is not exactly known for off-roading. <laughs> no. Fortunately, the gentleman is we're driving us. right now. The man who's letting us use his house did cut the path of grass here for us. Yeah, just for us. Nice guy. Nice guy. All right, here's the big off, hill. Let's off, go. Off-roading in a 911, in a unicorn 911. Here we go. Come on, this make it up. Stretch. Make it up. Make it up. All right, I think we might make it. All right, we're good. There we go. All right. All right. We're going to go for a little drive. You got it. Buckle up for safety. All right, let's buckle up. Let's buckle up. Oh my God, I can't even reach behind. It's a little bit far back there, eh? I wonder if they let us out. <laughs> uh, is this automatic? Yeah, it's automatic this way. <laughs> So have you, have you driven a lot of 911s, a lot of Porsches in your life? I could say that this is probably about the third. This is my only 911 that I've driven. I had a McCann for a while. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. Very nice car and a Cayenne, which okay. is the slightly bigger version of the yeah. Buckhan. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. What I noticed right away that I like about this this car is the all, all the light here from the glass roof. The cockpit is very open and... And so bright. what we can do on a sunny day, we can kind of close the curtain a little to yeah. block out the sun. Yeah. Yeah, and, nice. But this time of year, the sun's pretty low. It's not really overhead, so I like to keep it open. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually which, giving us good camera sort of. What's very special about this car is it has the retractable glass roof. The roof actually retracts all the way back. We're not going to do that today for two reasons. <laughs> One, it's freezing outside. <laughs> <laughs> so you got for living in Pennsylvania. And two, the uh, roof actually came off the track. Oh, so okay, okay. I have to get that fixed. And uh, Porsche, who fixed it originally, all of a sudden now they said they cannot fix it. So I have to take it to a place uh, over in Devon who claims that they can get it back on track. Literally. Okay, okay. <laughs> like a Porsche specialist sort of thing? I think they're an exotic car specialist. Okay, okay. Sounds expensive. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out. It wasn't too expensive. Uh, when I pick up the, when I got the car in 2009, yeah. there was trouble with the roof, and Porsche fixed it for probably under $1,800. Oh, good. Okay. Unfortunately, I think the only guy at Porsche who knew how to do it is no longer there. Yeah, I guess that's the thing with these older Porsches, eh, is they really need a specialist, a real specialist to, to sort of work on them, right? Not every mechanic is going to touch these things or is able to touch, touch these things. All right, so apparently the Porsche deal that I've been having it serviced... Oh, that's tight. Whoa. That was tight. Uh, we almost just wrote the Porsche off. <laughs> Close call. <laughs> They have 20 service technicians, and apparently two or three of them are certified to work on this car. Out of 20? Out of 20. Oh my gosh, wow. Interesting. Okay, well, let's talk horsepower and torque. Do you know the, the specs of this? I have absolutely no idea. Okay, all right. Did well, that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put those on the screen right now. Um, so, rear-wheel drive car, we know that, right? Rear-wheel drive... 
Okay. Uh, not very good in the snow, as I found out. Okay. <laughs> and as we saw earlier, not very good at going off-roading on no. grass and dirt. Okay. Uh, so, typical flat six, boxer engine. Are you asking or telling? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're going to be putting these specs on the on the window or on the um, on the screen, but I'm pretty sure it's your your typical Porsche flat six. And get some some official numbers for you on the screen there. Um, what about just the general feel? Is it? I mean, is it typical Porsche? You know, tight steering. You know, cornering like it's on rails, or is so, that something that came later in the sort of Porsche Porsche evolution? So th I believe there were different model and engine types that you could get when this car was new. This is not a turbocharged car. Okay. So the acceleration is not what you would expect from a Porsche 911. Yeah. But the handling absolutely is. Same. Okay. And okay. the acceleration, once you hit about 60 or 70 miles an hour, is just very different from a normal car. Okay. This car really gets into its own once you get up to about 60 or 70. Okay. I see. Interesting. Naturally aspirated. Those again. That's that's obviously what's contributing to the, the rarity of this car, right? Everyone's going turbocharged now. You can find a good naturally aspirated vehicle. I think that's why the sound of it sounds so nice, right? When you started it up, it really has that nice deep sort of throaty sound for a six cylinder. Good. Just whipping through some nice sort of. Going back, back through the horse country here. Back Villanova roads here. Nice windy roads. Really, really like this area. It's gorgeous. Yeah, you can feel that even with all the potholes and bumpy roads, we're not really bouncing around a whole lot. Nice old Porsche digital display, or excuse me, analog display. That is very analog. Very, very <laughs> analog. Old school. But believe it or not, the safety features on this car are pretty modern. It does have all the airbags. Yeah. All right, give her some, give her some. It's a nice sound. Really nice sound. You really get that that sound of the exhaust coming in. I like it. Wow. So you can feel it had pretty good acceleration, but not crazy acceleration. Like our head didn't snap back like you'd expect yeah, yeah. from a turbocharged 911. Yeah. 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 The sound of it is it's real nice. And it takes that corner no problem. No problem. The handling of this car is this, fantastic. Haven't lost anything on the handling over the years. This is where the car is definitely like in its sweet spot, right? Coming through these little turns here. With all its race car sort of heritage. Nice. Nice. That's the golf course on the right here. Have you had to replace the wheels at all yet? No tires yet? We're still on the original rims. And this is the third set of tires in 16,000 miles. Third set, Jesus. After it sat in the garage in a desert for years, I definitely was not going to drive on the old, those the original tires. Yeah. The second set just did not last long. I think the second set only lasted about 4,000, 5,000 miles. Okay. And what uh, do you, what do you want here? Uh, Pirelli Super Sports? I believe these are Bridgestones. We can take a look at it when we get out of the car in a minute. Okay. All season. All I know is they're not very good in the snow. <laughs> Did I mention that? Earlier? <laughs> summer, summer sticky racing tires. <laughs> uh, we also, I got stuck in a hurricane once, and I can tell you that they're not very good in a hurricane either. Oh my goodness! Not good in the wet. Not good in uphills. Does great on dry. <laughs> Beautiful paved tarmac like that. Correct. Or a racetrack. Racetrack <laughs> is perfect for this car. <laughs> Around a nice bend like that. And you can see it just grips the road nice and smooth. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Again, that sound, that nice sound coming through. And it does have paddles, right? It's got 
It does have a Teptronic system. Do you ever use that? I never use it. Get a lot more out of the out of the engine, right? You can rev it a lot higher. The one thing I wish the car had would be a stick shift. Yeah. But at the time, it was just too uh, good a value to pass up, even though it didn't have a stick shift. Yeah. As you know, most modern racing now is done with Teptronic. Yeah. And the days of the stick shift are slowly going away. It's just faster. Just faster around a racetrack. Faster 0 to 60. Yeah. Yeah. Having a computer shift is always going to be quicker than having, you know, them manually doing it, right? But, I mean, it's more exhilarating, I think, you know, working an engine, right? Correct. It takes away a lot of the fun stuff that we had when we were kids. It does. Just when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, when you were a kid. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. We're under uh, the blue route at this point. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. You know, I think what's even more amazing is I haven't gotten lost yet. Yeah, you're navigating pretty pretty well around here. Pretty well. So let me ask you this. You've you've had the car for a number of years, it's appreciating, right? It's a bit of a unicorn, it's a wise investment. What are your what are your plans going forward? Are you is there a, is the appreciation curve gonna continue? Do you look to, you know, obviously get a nice return on your money, cash out, turn it over to a you know nice Exotic, or what's what's the plan? So at this point, I've had this car for about 12 years. Uh, I've had really good appreciation, and the last year or two, its appreciation curve has gone exponential. Yeah. So there's two things I have to fix. I have to fix the roof and that front spoiler. Yeah. But once those are fixed, this car should be worth over $100,000, and I think I'm going to look to change to just a different exotic. Okay. Uh, just to try something different after 12 years. Yeah. And... You know, maybe Why get not? a stick shift or yeah, something that's yeah, you know, just just a little different. Yeah, anything you fancy? Uh, well, I'm, for all the viewers out there, I'm gonna go with sharp moves. Follow your recommendations. I oh, think we yeah. talked about a McLaren or a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be exciting for you, man. And yeah, we'll take a look at some of the cars that you bring through and see if uh, we can put a bid in on some of them. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for uh, for showcasing this beautiful car of yours. We appreciate it, um, and we are excited to see what you've got in store for us in the future. And uh, all the best with uh, with this vehicle going forward. Thank you so much. Look forward to uh, catching up on the channel in the future, and see if you have any other cars that maybe I can buy. All right. Will do, guys. If you're uh, if you're watching this video, really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed like and share. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.